Are we curly? The Tafro. <laughs> the Turkish Afro. Right. Well, go on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Sunday Sessions. Uh, today we're doing something for me that screams summer, right? We're just going to do dressed crab, aioli, beautiful tomatoes, and some sourdough bread. Um, got a live crab. You can do this with potted crab, but again, I like to do things from start to finish. It's just the way that we do it in kitchens. Going to start by killing this crab. So here, this is a crab's reproductive organ, right, in here. I've got a steel that I'm just going to put in the top and then I'm just going to push this through. That's it, right? Crab's dead, yeah? That's it. Now, this water has to be a rolling boil. We want to cook it hard and fast. But most importantly, we need salt, right? So we're going to go one, two. Now, I'm just going to taste this See if my water's seasoned enough. I want it to taste like the sea. I'm gonna go one more. Two more. Four big cracks, right? So look, water's at a boil. Crab's dead. It's gonna go in for eight minutes. Lid on, allow it, leave it, let it cook. Crabs in, water salted, rolling boil, eight minutes. Next thing to do is we're probably just gonna crack on with a quick little aioli. And aioli is a garlic mayo, right? You can use store-bought mayo if you want. Um, I'm not the biggest fan. So in here, I have two good quality egg yolks, some neutral oil in a gravy jug. It's just the way we live. Um, and we're gonna start by just mixing our egg yolks. And then we're slowly going to incorporate our oil, yeah? Slowly, slowly. No rush. I'll tell you what, it's probably easier. I'll put this little tea towel down and then my bowl won't move. My bowl seems to be moving more. Just going to slowly incorporate. Now we want to do it slowly because we're trying to thicken the egg. We're trying to emulsify fat into fat and we need to keep it mixing so that the molecules cling together and thicken. So look, you can look already, this is starting to thicken, right? Nowhere near where we need it, but we've got a thickness that we didn't have before. If you want to use a store-bought mayonnaise, use a good one and you can just grate the garlic into it after. But the chef in me wants to do every element make sure I've done it justice and do it right. What I like to do is take it to its stiffest, stiffest point. Yeah? So again, this could take a little bit more oil. And then we're gonna release it and water it down with lemon juice, and that's gonna give us the right consistency. So not only are we seasoning it with acidity, we're moving the consistency about and taking it to a point that we're happy. And from two watery egg yolks to this thick stuff, yeah? Now, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna lift the lid off this because it's dripping down my leg and it's fucking hurting. Take the lid off. I'm gonna go in there now with some lemon juice. Like so. Just gonna mix our lemon juice in. And now that our lemon juice is inside, it's taking it a tiny bit more watery. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil. I'm gonna add olive oil, just to give it another layer of complexity, another flavor. And this olive oil is gonna give it a pepperiness. Good glug of olive oil. 
Right, time to get the crab. Time has gone off. Let it drip off any water. Stick that onto a tray. Now, this crab now has to go into ice water. If we leave it out while it's still hot, it still has the ability to cook. We want to shock it and stop the cooking completely. So our crabs are nice and moist and cook beautifully. So I'm gonna run inside and stick this crab into some ice water. It's been about 15 minutes in ice water. My crabs come down to temperature and I'm going to teach you how to take it out of its shell. Yeah, I'd say this was the right thickness. Nice and thick, looks like mayo. Um, now, we're gonna to need to season. I didn't season at the beginning, so big whack of salt. We've already got acidity from our lemon juice. I'm gonna go in. When I read the word aioli, right, I don't want like mayonnaise with a suggestion of garlic. I want garlic mayo, yeah? So I wanna know that there's garlic present. I wanna taste it all the way through. I'm about bold flavors. I'm not about subtlety and like delicate. I'm about punchy. So I want this mayo to have a proper garlic punch, right? So this is a clove that's going in. And again, we're gonna taste as we go. Yeah, so that's one clove of garlic. We're gonna mix this in. Get in there. I'm not gonna go another whole one because just in case like, we're going to see people after. You don't want to just reek of garlic. So, one and a half cloves of garlic, right? Get this in. Yeah. Fire from garlic. Good hum of peppery olive oil. Loads of salt. Like bursts of acidity from a really good lemon. That's aioli. Now, I'm gonna put this in the fridge just for it to seize up because I've made this outside. It's almost 30 degrees out and I want to be able to spoon it and get a nice like dollop. If I did it now at room temperature, it will spread once it hits the plate. So I'm just gonna run this into the kitchen, stick it in the fridge and I'll be back. crab right I'm just gonna pull these legs off right so we want to go in the direction that's a grip against the way the crab moves like that yeah legs are off we want to do the same with the claws and then look so the head part is where the brown crab meat sits. This little skeleton is where the white crab meat sits, right? So what we wanna do, I'm gonna put my two thumbs here on this hinge. You can already see, if I push it, it's starting to give, right? You see it? Like a wobbly tooth at the dentist. I'm gonna push the skeleton away from the head, like that, and pull it out. Now, you'd probably think that when you're cooking crab, most of the meat comes from the claw. All the really good delicate meat is in these little grooves in here, right? So this is full of crab meat, and I'm gonna teach you how to get it out. Firstly, we're gonna take this brown meat, and we're just gonna spoon this brown crab meat out of the head into this bowl. If you're gonna make a booyah base or a bisque, roast these shells down and make a beautiful shell stock. Pat that off. And then in here is our brown crab. Head meat, underrated head meat. It's beautiful, good stuff. Um, I'm gonna set that for one side. The most important part when it comes to picking a crab is removing the dead man's fingers, we call them, yeah? So these little, they almost look like air vents. Like they're filters, yeah? These cannot be eaten. You'll end up with really, really bad stomach ache. And I think you probably choke on one. So get rid of those. Anything that looks a bit like it should be in a horror film or part of a predator fancy dress costume, get rid of it. 
This is our crab skeleton, yeah? Where we've pulled these legs out, we've left like little knuckles in here, right? Now, you wanna invest in a crab pick and you wanna put your crab pick into your crab and pull that knuckle out, yeah? So it's just the bit of shell that connects the, the legs to the body. I'll show you why in a sec. So you're gonna get rid of all of these, but the idea of a crab pick is that you can get to every little corner of where the meat sits. Because we spent 18 pound on this crab and we wanna get as much crab meat out as we can. So just taking out all these knuckles. So the knuckles are out, yeah? What this brings us now is that you see in here, we've got like little entry points, yeah? And in these little entry points, if I stick this crab pick in, you'll see this is where all the crab meat lives, yeah? In between like little bits of cartilage in there is your beautiful crab meat. Now this is brilliant just to eat like this, which I'm gonna do, excuse me. Oh, fucking crab's great, man. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick all of this meat out into this bowl. Now, if you're doing this first time, you're going to get bits of crab shell in there. Like the crab shell is so delicate that if you hit it with a pick, it's gonna come away. But after we've picked it out, we're gonna lay it on a tray and then pick through it in, with our hands and get out any bits of crab shell. No one wants to eat crab shell. It's like getting an eggshell and an omelette. It's fucking shit. So let's just pick this out now. I'm just gonna work my way through each one of these little crevices and cavities and you'll slowly see that our crab meat just falls out. This is why crab's so expensive. One, they're hard to catch and two, when you go to a good restaurant, some little chef, yeah, I say little, I mean the lower part of the brigade I've been here, I used to pick eight crabs a day, yeah, at a specific restaurant. It was what I was allowed to do, was to make bread and pick crabs. And you earn your stars and stripes this way, man. Like, these are the jobs that you're like, oh yeah, I wanna be a chef, but you have to do the shit stuff in order to climb and to grow. So look, if you look through here, see where the, I'm poking this? I've completely cleaned this passage of crab. Yeah? Doesn't, there's not loads. But we've still got legs and claws to do, but this is the painstaking part. This is like the strenuous bit. But this is also, I feel that the best crab meat is in the, is in the, in, but also I feel like the best crab meat is in the skeleton. Helicopter's out. Another day in Edmonton. Feel free to buy potted crab. It's just that I find that potted crab is very hit and miss. You don't know where it's come from. You don't know where it's been cooked. You don't know who's cooked it. You don't know if it's cooked right. Whereas I know that I can get a crab, kill it, boil it for eight minutes, and know that I'm gonna have beautiful, succulent, sweet crab at the end of it. cave. It's where the, the meat used to live that's now in this bowl. I know this isn't loads of meat but it is something that we have to do. Um, I can already see here that I've broken a piece of the, the skeleton and that's the stuff we don't want to eat. Right so we completely picked the skeleton clean. I broke it in half made sure I got every piece out. That, that meat's gone into the fridge. We want it to stay cold otherwise like we're in the sun today and like room temperature, lukewarm crab isn't the recipe for a great thing. So we're gonna move on to legs and claws now, right? So crab claw, I'm gonna pull this away from that. We're gonna pull this top pincer 
away from it, pull it, and then you've got a little bit of meat here. And then the rest, we're just going to crack with the back end of a knife, which will expose this fucking absolutely beautiful claw meat, right? Just like that. Beautiful claw meat. Look at that, man. Fucking hell. I used to get into trouble <laughs> at restaurants because I'd be breaking crabs and I'd be like, okay, I'll, I'll break down this crab for you, chef, and just break, break it off and eat it. But crabs are great, man. I just, they're so underrated and delicious. I'm going to take a picture of this because it's just like fucking pure universal artistry. I don't know if that's the thing, but like the world's put this here and it's fucking mad pretty. So in here, there's a piece of cartilage that we need to make sure that we remove, right? So I'm just gonna pull these flaky bits of crab away, like that. Do the same on the other side. And it's beautifully cooked, like you can see the moisture in it. And it like breaks down into individual pieces. Just pull it away. And you're left with that little bit of crab bone. So the claw was sat here, right? We've broken the claw and we've exposed this little bit of meat here. We're just going to pick this meat out as well. Just shovel it out onto this plate, making sure that you can get as much out from this end. And then when we've got all the top out, I'm going to turn it over and go from the other side. And this, this side's more of like a scoop. So I'm gonna use the flat end, just gonna push it in and like circle around the skeleton. And out comes the meat. So look, all the meat's out. Now, yeah, all the, all the big bits of meat does come from the claw, right? But the, the the meat on the inside, for me, is a sweeter meat. We've conquered skeleton. We've conquered the claws. We're now gonna move on to legs. The way a crab's built is all off hinges, right? So your first hinge is this. Then you've got the second one in the middle here, which allows the crab to move left and right. And then this last one on the end for it to pick things up. I'm gonna take this off, the last bit. Make sure that this comes away with no meat. We're gonna pull that piece away. Again, slowly pulling it so it comes away with no meat. This little knuckle comes off. A little bit of meat on that one, stick it on the plate. And then this piece, we're gonna take a, a knife that we don't regularly use. And on the, the top end here, we're just gonna put a little crack in and twist our knife, right? And then this pulls away, leaving us fucking absolutely glorious, gelatinous crab meat. And then we're just going to pull this out the other side. This hasn't got any cartilage running through it. Go straight in like that. And pull this meat out. And that's how you do crabs. I'm going to crack on with the rest. And then we're going to pick through it. And then we're just going to dress the plate and eat it. Happy summer, ladies and gentlemen. Happy summer. Right, get yourself some petrol station gloves that apparently one size fits all, but they don't fit these mitts. Um, so here I have a tray with ice underneath it because we want this tray to stay cold. We don't want to warm up our crab, right? The reason I'm wearing gloves is that there's a specific enzyme in our skin that if you start to pick through crab bare skin, it starts to break the crab down and you lose that texture. So we're going to go gloved up. All I'm going to do is pat through this crab, right? Like imagine I was playing the piano until we find a little bit of shell, listen. A little bit of shell. We don't want any shell in this crab. And this is just our way of double checking it. It doesn't matter if you break the crab down, because we're gonna dress it and it's all gonna come back together. But you just wanna be able to check it and make sure that you're not serving crab with shell in it, right? And I'm going to do this three times. And I know it's boring, 
but you'll be surprised that like, you'll pick through this once and be like, oh, there's no shell in it. And then we go through it the second time. You're like, fuck, how did I miss all this shell? And I'm just pressing down just to see if I can feel anything that doesn't feel like beautiful, soft crab meat. Right, I've checked it three times. I'm happy that there's no shell in it, right? So, let's take this crab, put it in a bowl. We've got all of this fucking beautiful crab meat now, right? I can get rid of my ice cube piano. get this show on the road. So, we've seasoned our crab, right? We've seasoned the water, so there's already initial salt in our crab, but we're gonna season it again. So, I just wanna do really subtle seasoning. So I'm gonna do a nice pinch of salt. Little, tiny bit of lemon zest. I'm gonna go a little squash a beautiful lemon juice. And then some really nice olive oil. I'm just gonna give this a mix and a taste just to see if our seasoning's right. Delicious, let that sit. We're gonna move on to just a few like dressed tomatoes. So I've got yellow datarinis, red datarinis, and some beautiful tigers, right? Not gonna do loads. Look at those, man, fucking absolutely gorgeous tomatoes. Just like humble ingredients, done properly, dressed right, seasoned. For me, it's the best type of food, man. The red ones are super sweet. The tigers are kind of an in-between. Look at that. Delicious. So, tomatoes are cut. Now, if you're doing this on a beautiful summer's day like I am, right? Leave your tomatoes in the sun. For me, it works for everything. Leave your watermelon in the sun, the melon in the sun, tomatoes in the sun. And the sun just kisses them, brings them up to temperature, and they kind of feel like you've picked them straight off the tree, right? So, tomatoes into this little bowl. Again, very simple garnish. Good cracker salt. And then I want like the younger leaves of some basil. So like the smaller ones. Just as a little accent, the kind of food that you want with white wine, sunshine, sea breeze, that kind of vibe. That's our basil in, right? Then, really nice olive oil. Today, I'm using a bottle of the fucking good good. This is like 1010 Capanzana that I had to beg for. Now, that's the hard part done, man. Like we've picked through the crab, we've dressed our tomatoes, aioli's made, I've got some really nice sliced bread. All we're gonna do is stick this all on a plate, really, and we're just gonna fucking Eat it how we like. Enjoy the elements. So, I'm gonna go on with the tomatoes first. Some really nice tomatoes. A little bit of basil, some salt, some very nice olive oil. We're just gonna plonk this dressed crab down. Plonk this crab down. And then I've just got some really nice sourdough. Just gonna put it here. Actually, I'm not gonna put it there. I'm gonna leave it on the side. Let's go some really light drizzles. 
of olive oil. And that for me, it's fucking summertime, man. Like, just ridiculous amounts of flavor in very limited ingredients. White wine is optional, but heavily recommended. And just sit in the sun and enjoy it. Right, I'm gonna go. Nice smudge of aioli on the bread. Then crab. Couple of tomatoes. You know what? Really good bread. Massive whack of garlic. Sweetness from crab. Acidity from tomato. A little like fresh accent of basil. Where's the fucking white wine blood? It's just really good. Camel, yeah, you want some crab? Huh? Come. What is it? It's a crab shell. Oh. Fucking kick it. One more little bit. One little bit. Huh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he asked me if it was a Turkish dessert. <laughs> Just eat it, man. Tell me what is that? It's garlic. A garlic? Yeah, eat it. Dad thinks it's rice. Dad thinks it's rice. I just want to have my on the Yeah. Summertime, man. That's what it's about. Sat in the garden. Family. One of them thinks it's rice. The other one doesn't eat early. But we get there in the end, didn't it? How's your rice? <laughs>